I am excited to introduce Ted Suter, a respected authority on the transformative power of having a digital mindset in business across the world. As one of Google's earliest employees, Ted spent over two decades helping to shape one of the greatest business success stories of our time. Now he's here today to share his insights on the digital age and its impact on innovation. Ted Suter, here he comes. Thank you. Can we do a quick selfie? That's awesome. So you've got an amazing mayor. Thank you, Mayor Bibb. It's a really inspiring story, and I got to chat with him a little bit before we got underway today. But his story about transformation and about investment and the opportunity to create jobs with a digital future, it's all spot on. I feel like you took like half my speech, so let's get underway. So I was really fortunate to be one of Google's earliest employees joining in 2001. And over those 20 plus years, I was able to work on some incredible projects all over the globe, primarily based in Chicago, but also uh, worked in Paris, France for a while. And during that time, the world has seen so much innovation and so much change, and it's incredibly exciting. And so when I was thinking about what we have looking forward to, I think to Ohio. So I love Cleveland. I'm actually originally from Toledo, so not too far away. All right, let's hear it for Toledo a little bit. But being an Ohioan, I've always had the sense of pride that Ohio has such great history and there's so much happening here. And when I was invited by my friend Adam Kaufman and Jumpstart to come speak to you all, I was really thinking about Ohio and Cleveland in particular really is on the cusp of a new era of prosperity and opportunity. And I think the mayor really spoke at how that's gonna happen. But our future is gonna hinge on entrepreneurs and the businesses that they build. It's gonna be about reimagining existing businesses in industries. And it's gonna be about modern, human-first leadership. And most importantly, and I might be a little bit biased, but it's also gonna take adapting a digital mindset. And all of this is gonna drive our economy, it's gonna create jobs, it's gonna create security. And so when we think about how we're gonna move forward, we start with events like this. How great is it to be able to come together this, in this beautiful space, in person, meeting, talking, sharing meals, sharing thoughts and ideas. And so it's these types of events where we're able to ignite and innovate. And so thanks to Jumpstart for putting this together. I think this is gonna be a huge annual event. So what kind of impact are we seeking? Is it economic? For sure. Is it job creation? Yes, I mean, I think fundamentally, doesn't it all just come down to the creation of jobs? Is it about bringing new businesses here, bringing existing businesses here? It's about the families that move to the city and to the state. And think about when we're attracting families and individuals to move to the state, the impact that has on the local economies. They're shopping in the local shopping districts, they're eating in the cafes. If they have children, the children are going to the local schools. That all lifts up our economy as a whole. But the thing to remember is that this doesn't happen organically. It takes the right leaders, like Mayor Bibb. It takes the right pro-growth policies. It takes the right organizations like Jumpstart and so many of others that are in the room here. It takes the right ideas. And if we can come together with a focus on action, then that's going to yield great results. And Ohio has an incredible foundation. Ohio has been the heart of innovation for at least the past 100 years. And if you think about it, so many industries and products and services that we, we, we rely on were invented in Ohio. Ohio is the birthplace of aviation. Ohio is the birthplace of the traffic light. Did you guys, how many people knew that it was birthplace of the traffic light? Ah, oh, fair amount. Okay, so here's a fun fact. 
The person who patented chewing gum, a Toledo win. So innovation has been happening in Ohio for a long time, and Ohio has a great foundation. And of course, there's always going to be ebbs and flows in the economy, and we will manage through those kinds of changes as we always have. And so now we're entering this digital age, and we're going to talk a lot about the digital age because digital is so important. But we're entering this digital age that is going to run at hyper growth, hyper speed, and it's going to create unlimited opportunity. And so I've been in the tech space for 25 years, 20 plus of those at Google. Think about the amount of change that we've seen just in those 25 years. I mean, Google was only invented in 1998, just 25 years ago. How many of you remember the dot-com implosion, 2000? The bubble had burst. I remember I had worked at a number of startups in the late 1990s in Denver and in San Francisco, and I, they had all gone out of business. They were all ahead of their time. And my, mo my mom came to me after the bubble burst, and she's just like, why do you keep doing this internet thing? Why don't you just be a stockbroker like your dad? So I'm glad that that didn't, advice I didn't take that. 2004, Gmail launched. Fun fact about Gmail is that it launched on April 1st, 2004. And when it came out, people thought that it was a joke because it was April Fool's Day. Obviously, it wasn't a joke. 2007, the iPhone came out. How, how many of you are iPhone? Android. Ooh, big iPhone crowd. iPhone came out in 2007, Android 2008. Think about the jobs and the economies that have cr been created just at the release of the mobile device. It's absolutely astounding. 2013, Google Glass came out. Nobody looks good wearing a Google Glass. And I have a picture of me on the cover of a magazine with this thing on, and it's like, it, it's permanently out there, and it's so bad. 2017, the biggest innovation of all time, Twitter went from 140 characters to 280. And now it's X, now it's X. We'll see what, we'll see what happens with X. But then in 2019, late 2019, early 2020, this, this virus that none of us were expecting started to circulate around the world. And then depending on where you were in early 2020, you were at home. The world shut down. And the pandemic really proved to be this time machine to the future, that so many businesses had this idea to invest more in digital infrastructure, marketing, communication, whatever. And that really became a top priority for Q3 because, I mean, if you think about it, on Monday, March 16th, 2020, if you didn't have a way to communicate with your customers or Mayor Bibb with your constituents or teachers with their students, the pandemic was really, really difficult for you. And what we all realized is that we were caught off guard and we weren't going to let that happen again. So the investment in digital really was a top priority. And at Google, that's how we spent our time, helping businesses large and small make this transition to being more digital so that they weren't caught off a of guard. But then, last year, just when things were starting to get moving, the world was turned upside down again. But it wasn't a war, it wasn't another virus, it, was, it, it wasn't the movie Barbie. I still haven't seen Barbie. Have you guys seen Barbie? Not a big Barbie crowd. Okay. <laughs> huge, huge movie. But really what it was on November 30th, 2022, the world said hello to ChatGPT. And then all of a sudden everything changed. The world now had access on their phone or on their home device to an incredibly powerful technology that has been in the background all along. Artificial intelligence, though not a new technology, AI has been around for 50 years. The phrase was coined by uh, mathematician Alan Turing in the 1950s, late 1950s. And it powers our Netflix searches, it powers Amazon, it powers our search on a search engine. And so it's always been there, it's always been in the background, but it hasn't really been accessible. And now it is. And so generative AI 
is able to have people get to scale quickly. How many of you are playing around with ChatGPT, Google Bard, Claude? Okay, so, so this is wild. A couple months ago, I was speaking to a similar sized group of business and government leaders in an Eastern European country, and I asked the same question, and like 10 people raised their hands. So it's good to see we've, we've come a long way in the months since. But it's something that everybody needs to not only use themselves, but to make sure that their employees are using. Because it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool that is gonna launch an entire new generation of entrepreneurs and startups. And many of those are gonna be based here in Cleveland, Northeast Ohio, and across the state. We need to be supporting our entrepreneurs because the great thing about entrepreneurs is that they have a healthy disregard for the way that things are done. Entrepreneurs don't build existing products, they build for the future. When I joined Google in 2001, the world didn't need another search engine. You guys remember like Excite and Lycos and AltaVista? They did just fine. You typed something into a box and you got an answer and that's kind of what you went with. But Larry and Sergey believed that there was a better way to retrieve information and disseminate it to the public. And so they wrote better algorithms. They created a better business. And they were building for the future, as a great entrepreneur should be doing. So interesting story about them is that their ideas for how search should work, how they want to create an email system and give away two gigabytes of storage for free, how they wanted to see the liberation of the internet via mobile devices, have streaming. All of this was in their vision, but it wasn't really possible at the time. It was definitely not economically possible. But what they did is they knew that Moore's Law would eventually make all of this possible. And you know Moore's Law, the idea, it's kind of flattened out now, but the idea that the size of transistors would um, be cut in half every two years, the power would double every two years, the costs would come down, the ease and use of it would make great products of a possibility for everybody. And that's what they were building towards. So they were building for something that wasn't possible. It wasn't, it, it just, it, 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 people were saying like, what are you trying to do here? This, this doesn't work. But they knew that it was coming. Reed Hastings, who founded Netflix, also had the same vision. He knew that streaming was gonna become the way that people access information. And he also made a huge early bet on fiber and mobile. So great entrepreneurs today have a disregard for the future. They're building for the future. They know that maybe what they want to do today isn't possible, but they will get there. So I put it to you, the investors in the room. When you're reading that business plan, when you're listening to that pitch or having coffee with that founder, and in the back of your mind, you're saying like, there's no way that that's possible. Or what are you talking about? That will never work. Or that is not economically feasible, that is the entrepreneur that you invest in. You hear that pitch that you think is crazy, that is when you should be writing the check because we want people with big, bold vision. And if you think about the big, bold visions that we're invested in over the past 30 years, we got Alphabet, Meta, Netflix, Tesla, SpaceX, Amazon, those companies alone, aside from the fact that they didn't exist 30 years ago, have created over 2 million direct jobs, tens of millions of indirect jobs, hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue, trillions in market value. We've never seen anything like this in the world. And this is going to continue. And one of the things to also kind of remember is that all of these companies are getting really big. They're getting very corporate. They're kind of slowing in many respects. So there's an opportunity for entrepreneurs to kind of fill a void that might be coming. But the one thing that I do want to make clear is that we talk about big tech. Here we are, you know, tech investors, tech investment conference, that it's not always just about tech. 
Now, I do believe wholeheartedly that every business to some degree now is a tech business because you have to have that digital infrastructure to survive, as I'd mentioned earlier. But there's also opportunities for traditional businesses to leverage AI, to leverage the tools and platforms that have become widely available to turbocharge their business. So quick example, Ohio filled with traditional manufacturing companies. And you might have a salesperson who is looking to gain an edge in selling the product that they manufacture. So they can go and sit down, and they probably already have this, a persona of who their buyer is, all the information about who buys their products. Then you take all the information about the product itself, pricing, what the product is, how it's made, et cetera. And then third, take all the information about the market that the product is a part of. Take all of this information, put it into ChatGPT, and ask ChatGPT and say, what objections will the salesperson overcome based on all of this information? And you can ask for as many objections as you want. You then take those objections and you put it into ChatGPT and say, now give me ways to overcome these objections. Then you take those objections and you take the ways to overcome the objections and say, ChatGPT, give me 10, 100, give me 1,000 ads that will overcome these objections and that will improve my ability to sell. All of that will take like an hour. And those ads that you run on your favorite platform, you know, whether it's Google or LinkedIn or wherever it is you advertise, that will give the salesperson a 10x return than anything that they're running today. Person doesn't need to know anything about technology. Person can be in the most traditional setting there is, but that person can now use a widely used and free technology to gain an advantage in selling a traditional product. Anybody can do that. So I wanna keep that in the back of our minds that tech isn't just for high tech, it's about for everybody. Another quick example, last week I was in Chicago looking at a pitch deck for a friend of mine who is uh, starting another VC fund, or starting a VC fund. She's an immigration attorney. She's hugely successful, very, very well known in Chicago. And her VC firm is turning on its, or her law firm is turning on its head what it means to be for a law firm. They're launching a VC fund. They create content online and off. They put on events like this. They speak all over the place. They have merch. How many times have you heard of a law firm having merchandise? And by the way, I see everyone's got the Jumpstart t-shirts. I hope those are available somewhere in the back. So here it is, modern, digital-first thinking is completely transforming a business like a law firm. So there's so much opportunity out there, it's mind-blowing. So when I travel the world, I'm really lucky to, to go all over the place. You should see my calendar this fall, it's bananas but I'm able to go all over the world and speak to government leaders, business leaders, investors, entrepreneurs, et cetera, about their efforts to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem and what it's gonna take. And I have some great ideas on that. And talking about how they're investing to ensure that they have the best infrastructure and what are they doing to attract businesses and workers. Everybody is do trying to do what you all are doing right now. Dubai, Paris, Miami, everybody is trying to do exactly this. So there's competition out there. Mayor, there's competition for Cleveland everywhere that everybody wants to be Cleveland. And so that's an exciting thing, but also it ups the ante a little bit and makes it a little more challenging. And so there's also going to be detractors. We run into people all the time who say, oh, AI is going to kill so many jobs and the robots are gonna take over and all of these things. And will there be job loss to the result of adoption of AI tools? Yes, there will be. But those jobs will often tend to be jobs that are mundane, repetitive, dare I say dangerous. So maybe jobs that kinda of should be run by an AI. But what it's going to also do, it's gonna create an entirely new level of jobs. It's gonna create entire new industries. You saw what the 
I mean, you gotta remember, the commercial internet as we all know it really didn't come around until about 1993. So think about how many tens or hundreds of millions of jobs that has created. Think about when mobile phones were launched in the, uh, 2007 and 2008, the industries that that has created. Video, the, the creator ecosystem that online video has created. So AI is gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create new opportunities, create new jobs, but there's also an important job for you as business leaders, and that is to make sure that you're upskilling your employees and that you're talking to the business leaders around the community that might have more traditional businesses that they need to upskill their employees because there is a competition for talent. So many businesses, and I also remember that it's only about 30% of the workforce, but that said, so many businesses are having a hard time getting people to come back to the office just three days a week. How many of you are having a hard time getting people to come back to the office three days a week? I think that's crazy. I'm very pro-office. I, I think offices are important. I think flexibility is important. I think empathy is important. But one of the ways that we're gonna get people to come back to the office in our digital world, in our digital mindset, as we transform our businesses, is to show our employees that we're leaning in to these types of investments, that we're gonna lean in to upskilling you, that we're gonna lean in to using tools like AI to ensure that you have the best opportunity to succeed at whatever it is your role is. We're also gonna make sure that our managers are better managers, that they're giving positive or giving honest feedback to our workers, that they're helping Peter, people become better leaders, that they understand that sometimes employees need to work at home for 50 different reasons. When we're trying to get employees to come back to the office, when we're trying to get employees to want to move to a new city, we have to show them that we're gonna be better leaders and better managers because employees are not gonna to wanna to go back to companies that are stuck in 2019. They're just not. Employees are wanting to go to the businesses that are the most forward-thinking, that are embracing transformation, that have a digital mindset. And that, if you do that, that will attract high-impact workers who are gonna make our businesses great. So where do we go from here? What are we gonna to do to continue to, to build on the mayor's vision to create this ecosystem of greatness? There's a lot of things that are, that are pretty obvious. Capital, of which we have wildly represented here in the room, which is great. You gotta have talent. We all know that, we understand that. Convening organizations like Jumpstart that can bring people together. Research universities are actually hugely important. Obviously, you've got all of these things happening. There are some non-obvious things, like having a culture of innovation, having a buzz, having excitement. The Forbes Under 30 Summit, it's a great piece of the puzzle. That's super cool. Events like this, the more convening organizations, the more types of events are gonna be a good thing. Having pro-growth policies, making it easy for businesses to come and do business. And if the mayor wants a real inspiration on a place that is going all in on pro-growth policies, go to Dubai. Dubai is creating entire government organizations purely focused on getting entrepreneurs to open up shop in Dubai. It's fascinating what they're doing. Having an engaged leadership network. When I was looking out over the lake out of my hotel room upstairs here, which was so beautiful, you see some of the old traditional buildings that have been around since the beginning of Cleveland. Those are the monuments to the people who came before us and the people who built the foundation on which we're gonna grow. And so are we building the next generation of business and civic leaders? It's a really important investment to make. Corporate partners are gonna be a great opportunity for us to not only have them come in and give us their sponsorship dollars to make events like this happen, but also entrepreneurs can solve problems that our corporate partners might be facing. Because remember, corporations get big and they get slow, and entrepreneurs, they got great ideas that they can come and help. And then finally, I do believe that having inspiring, convening spaces for our entrepreneurs is a really important part of the puzzle. Going back to Dubai really quickly, they took a mall 
that they originally said that, okay, this mall is kind of doing well, kind of not, it's in kind of a weird area. They took over the mall and turned it into an uh, uh, entrepreneurial workspace. So instead of having the, the Lululemon store, it's now a fintech startup space. So thinking about how can we take space that I know the city has, how can we turn those into inspiring places to go and convene? So as I think about what do we do next as a group, what are the things that we can do to bring the mayor's vision to life? What can we do to build on what Jerry was saying during his introduction? The most important thing is to get up and meet people today and tomorrow. That each of you should make this personal goal to go home with 20 new connections. Some of you, I bet, are really good at it. So you stand up and you run up and you introduce yourself. That's awesome. That's so fun. It's super invigorating. Some of you might not be into being outgoing and energetic. So I put the challenge out to you to Get out there, get out of your comfort zone, meet as many people as you can. Because if there's one common challenge that everybody faces around the world in this competition to create these wonderful ecosystems, it's that they live in silos. It's when people don't know each other that slows productivity and opportunity. It's when organizations are working towards a similar goal side by side, but they're not collaborating that actually slows down progress. So get out there, meet as many people as you can, go talk to the crazy entrepreneurs who have the big vision, write them checks, and have an incredible time. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on the event, Jerry. Too.